When New Westminster first looked at the, the living wage, the rate at that time was sixteen seventy four an hour for Greater Vancouver, and it's now increased to more than $18, which I'm sure the other speakers will speak to. And we've increased our rate in keeping with the principles and the ideals of the uh, living wage campaign. The, uh, but the impact was interesting, and the impact wouldn't be the same for every city. Uh, but New Westminster generally and informally has seen itself as a progressive employer, but it wasn't formal policy. At that time, the number of city employees below the living wage was zero. After the increase, what we learned was a number of auxiliaries were above the living wage. The, the living wage requirement in New Westminster is anybody who works on city property with, for more than one hour a month. So it exempts people who are delivery people who are just dropping some, someone off. And we have a couple of exemptions where it's actually a, a private business leasing city property or something like that. But that's the criteria. And uh, I thought long and hard about what would be a progressive criteria in the Canadian context. Although there are 160 cities who have a living wage in the United States, they have all kinds of limitations. So some of them might say, uh, if there's 50 employees in a contract, that's small, so, so that won't be covered. Anyone over 50 employees will be covered. Others will say the value of the contracts. So if it's over a certain value, the living wage has to be implied. And I really felt that that missed the point, that the point was to address the living situation of our poorest workers, regardless of who they work for or how big their contract is or how many other employees are working with them. And so we, we looked at a living wage based on that idea of working on city property. And uh, it turns out that some of our auxiliaries uh, now are below the living wage, and that's an issue that we'll have to address as per our policy that will guide contract negotiations. And we're having to work through Metro Vancouver uh, because Metro Vancouver is our bargaining agent to insist on and be clear that we have a living wage policy in New Westminster and that that must be met and will be met for us at the conclusion of any further rounds of bargaining. And it's also applied to other contracts that we negotiate directly. What's Scrooge got to do with the living wage? Well. If you want to be a reformer, you got to have some sense of humor to encourage people to think about it open-mindedly. And I carried around a picture of Scrooge in my back pocket. And the reason I did is because of the arguments some of the critics of the living wage were making. On the one hand, uh, people were saying, Jamie, this is going to be horribly expensive. It's going to bankrupt the city, what you're doing. And again, I say, well, it doesn't bankrupt the city when we increase the wages of the people who are not our poor underclass who were using to do labor. And on the other hand, people would say, Jamie, this is a waste of time because it affects so few people anyway. Why are you bothering to do it? Well, both things can't be true. So in the end, uh, and this is an important point because New Westminster isn't a contracting out city. Uh, so we were surprised when we got the report on how many vendors are actually supplying services and employment to the city. We were surprised by that. It was 55 just with our central administration, let alone the departments. But uh, of those, of, of all of those, it's catering, linen supply, paving, security, waste removal, alarm and locksmithing, couriers, checking the traffic lights, make sure they're synchronized and the light bulbs are working. With all of those, at the end of the day, uh, con contacting all of the vendors, we only had two who said they would not do business with the city because of a living wage policy. And frankly, one of those was already iffy about whether they would want to continue uh, with the city or not. So only two, only two said they would not do business with the city because of a living wage policy. The cost is estimated at about $150,000. To put that in perspective, in our city, it's $150,000 out of a $77 million budget, or the salaries of one, one, one of our senior staff is the cost to lift up the poorest workers to a reasonable level. I can't say for every city what the impact would be. It depends. Uh, what I can say is that if a city has a good track record of being a fair employer, it's probably not going to cost them a lot to do this. If they haven't had that track record, it might take 
longer to get there, if there's been changes in the administration and the policies, it might take longer to get there. 